I'm not sweating it. I've had critics since day one. That's the fuel for the fire. With his vastly successful reality show, a renowned custom fabrication business, and a steadfast personality that translates well to television, fans are right to describe Ian Russell as a triple threat in the automotive industry. The media personality was born in Sunland, California, USA in November 1970, and during his childhood spent plenty of time with his father, a devoted car enthusiast who helped nurture his son's interest in auto customization and eventually turned it into a million dollar empire and its subsequent Amazon Prime spin-off, Custom Cars Let's Leds, Back from the Dead with Ian Russell, have only helped to cement Ian's position as a heavyweight in the reality TV genre. The established businessman capitalized on his success by launching a well-received merchandise line, and with help from his doting wife, Jamie, a nurse and fellow car fanatic with whom he has two children named Jace and Ava Love Russell. The animal lover and tattoo aficionado boasts over 150,000 followers on Instagram and has been an open book when it comes to his passion for customizing vehicles and making customers' dreams come true. Fans will be shocked to know that he is quoted as saying, I love what I do. The funny thing is I'm not particularly into cars, but it's my addiction making them and creating all of these shapes. Surprisingly, Ian, who is described as a laid-back craftsman, doesn't keep any of the cars he makes either. The Netherlands, Germany, and Japan are some of the countries where Ian's creations have been shipped to from Long Beach, thanks to the Californian's global audience. Way back in 2003, Ian was asked to make a DVD, which led to him inking a lucrative deal with MAV-TV Motorsports Network after impressing the network's executives. It's pretty crazy since no one ever envisioned this, Ian said in a 2021 interview. We're not entertainers, we're car people making the coolest cars that we can possibly make. Apparently not realizing that such is entertaining in itself. Ian can be also spotted at car events such as the Spokane Speed and Custom Show where he sells merchandise, signs autographs, and takes the time to chat with his fans. Since its premiere in 2014, 69 episodes of Full Custom Garage have been filmed over 8 seasons. Due to the increasing demand of customized cars, Ian and his workmates Tom Flores and Victor Cacho have their work cut out and sometimes face difficulties when executing their visions. Luckily, teamwork makes the dream work, and the hardworking trio never let their customers down. Before landing his own show, Ian was already making a name for himself thanks to his appearance in Back From The Dead, Hot Rod Documentary, Back From The Dead 2, and Car Warriors. His loyal fan base supports his every venture, and has been following his journey as he builds and customizes cars for well over a decade. The master fabricator has a knack for transforming discarded objects into stunning custom cars, creating each part of the car body by hand, using just everyday garage tools. When thinking of popular car customization shows, one of the most obvious would be Pimp My Ride. Between 2004 and 2007, the show was hosted by rapper Exhibit and became something of a cult classic, despite its brief shelf life with some of the funniest clips still circulating social media to this day. However, in 2015, the Huffington Post interviewed former contestants about their experience and confirmed what many had suspected for years but never confirmed. Almost everything viewers saw was scripted or exaggerated. Former contestant Brooke Siegel left millions of Americans disillusioned by claiming in an interview that MTV rented the house where Exhibit came to meet her, faked her backstory for entertainment purposes, and instructed her to lie about her age and claimed to be 22 instead of 25, fellow former contestant Justin Deeringer took to Reddit to share his side of the story years after appearing on the show in 2005. According to Justin, MTV took his vehicle away for five months, but made it look like it had only been gone for a few days. Meantime, the production team failed to make temporary transportation arrangements for Justin. Jake Glazer and Seth Martino are two former contestants who were demeaned and humiliated on the show, leading to allegations of emotional abuse. The storyline for Jake's episode saw his car littered with cigarette butts, and he was instructed to say that his grandmother was a non-stop smoker. In reality, the unhygienic cigarette butts were placed there by the production team. As for Seth, he was forced to play the role of a fat person who can't stop eating. And to add insult to injury, the modified car came with its own cotton candy machine. In his interview, Seth said, I know I'm fat, but they just went the extra mile to make me look extra fat by telling the world that I kept candy all over my seat and floor, just in case I got hungry. Seth's interview revealed even more tidbits of juicy information, such as that many of the modifications were useless or malfunctioning. The TV installed in his car stopped working, and the LED light installed on his seat heated up and was unusable. 
When filming wrapped up, the modified rear door of his vehicle was removed, as it impeded the back seat belt functionality. The cotton candy machine was also unusable, as it had no dome. Just a month after appearing on the show, Seth had opened $1,700 on a new engine for his car, which has been the case for many contestants. The modification on Pimp My Ride were purposely for aesthetic purposes, and the cars always left the garage with the same mechanical issues they had at the beginning of the episode. Other contestants were forced to sell their cars when facing similar issues. There was also no audition process for Pimp My Ride contestants, as most of them had connections to the show's producers despite not being paid actors. On a more positive note, it's reported that Exhibit and the contestants got on well, and the majority of contestants were happy with their vehicles despite the, mostly, useless and illegal customizations. Other well-known and more realistic car customization shows include Unique Rides, Wheeler Dealers, Fast and Loud, and RMD Garage. We'll briefly focus on some of the hosts of the aforementioned similar shows. Will Castro of Unique Rides landed his own show in 2015, after years of hard work as a Long Island-based celebrity car designer with dozens of successful projects under his belt. The show's premise was simple, to follow Will and his five employees at the Smithtown shop as they designed, built, and revealed customized cars for their client base made up almost entirely of athletes and other celebrities. Will's journey as a car designer for the stars began way back in 1989 when he was asked by rapper Eric Sermon, who attended high school with his brother, to customize his Mercedes-Benz for a prestigious event at the Apollo Theater. In an interview with the New York Post, Will reminisced, Ever since then, they knew that we were the shop, the people to go to. With Carmelo Anthony, 50 Cent, Donald Trump, and LeBron James as just some of his clients, Will was never hurting for work. But, paradoxically, his popularity took a hit when the show premiered in 2016 on Velocity Channel. Will's show was heavily criticized for its tacky customization, choppy camera work, and lack of imagination. If you want to view something just before you plan to go to bed, do not view unique rides. Your brains will be on fire and your eyeballs will not stop rolling in your head, one viewer said, claiming that the camera switched picture over 200 times in just 5 minutes and gave him motion sickness. Another review reads, When the cars are revealed, the owner seems to be polite rather than show the disgust they probably really feel. Despite being described as a loser, lazy, and someone with a holier-than-thou attitude like you've just cured cancer, Will has almost half a million Instagram followers to this day and is still customizing cars, so he's clearly doing something right. Richard Rawlings of Fast and Loud, which was cancelled in 2021, is another polarizing figure in the reality TV landscape. For posing in a thong for a disastrous publicity campaign, to allegedly insulting disabled fans and verbally abusing his employees, there's no shortage of controversy surrounding the charismatic media personality. After years of battling lawsuits, complicated divorces, disgruntled former employees, and thousands of irate viewers as the show's storylines became more and more scripted and ludicrous, Richard moved on to bigger and better things and is now focusing on his other business ventures, which include a bar and grill and a restaurant. On a more positive note, there was never a dull moment on Fast and Loud, and none of the customizations in his shop, Gas Monkey Garage, were accused of being dull or unimaginative. Finally, Mike Brewer and Ed China of Wheeler Dealers are far more wholesome characters, despite the somewhat acrimonious end to their professional and personal relationship. The shock departure of Ed, the show's mechanic from Wheeler Dealers, led to Mike being sent death threats by fans who accused him, perhaps unjustly, of not standing up for his friend. When producers suggested on cutting down Ed's scene so he'd barely appear in the show, the eccentric mechanic took a stand and decided that it was time to move his talents to other platforms, namely YouTube and Instagram. This meant that Mike got far more screen time, which some viewers claim this was his intention all along, as he was beginning to take second place to the talented and relatable Ed. Never one to shy away from conflict, Mike became embroiled in a verbal war with a Twitter user who said, So, people that stick up for at the Ed China aren't true fans? Only people who blow smoke up your ass are true fans? Says it all. In his reply, which he soon deleted, Mike called Ed a traitor and claimed that the mechanic left the show after 13 years without saying anything. The current state of their relationship is unknown, but Mike is still hosting Wheeler Dealers, whereas Ed's YouTube channel is thriving. Historically, the phrase custom car was first used in the 1950s, although the actual concept of one has changed enormously in the last few decades. Car customization was actually a thing before World War II. The owners of 1929 to 1934 models would remove the fenders of their vehicles or replace them with light cycle fenders for a new look. 
while owners of later models would alter the suspension, replace engines, and add fender skirts to name a few changes. The early era of car customization was a far simpler time than it is today, with colorful paint jobs taking a while to emerge. In the late 1930s, the aim of customization was to smooth out and sharpen stock lines rather than make a car flashy and eye-catching. As the trend gained popularity, companies began advertising via car customization by placing their logos on vehicles to sponsor racers. Over time, custom builders pushed the limits of customization by replacing even more auto parts, such as taillights, grills, bumpers and fenders, and headlamp housings. They also add chrome to the vehicles. Often, chrome stripping was added to the sides of the vehicle, or painted bumpers were replaced with chrome bumpers for a sleeker aesthetic. Bodywork had become one of car customization's most important aspects by the 1950s, along with daring colors and design. A decade later, huge creative advances were made, as custom builders began using metallic colors, flames, hand-painted pinstripes, and scallops. As of today, there are hundreds of custom car builders around the world who specialize in aftermarket accessories, enhancing engine parts, and generally modifying vehicles with their own personal touch. By replacing the engine and transmission, they also optimize vehicle performance. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.